Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Well, that didn't take long. Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. This past Monday, March 1st, I was making phone calls to check in with all of our customers, all of our clients, all the tackle shops in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region to find out about fishing reports. And I didn't even get to Hook House in Tom's River before I was notified a little after 10 a.m. that Ed Gintari was first on the board just a little after 10 a.m with a 30-inch striped bass from the Tom's River bloodworm that he picked up from Dennis at Hook House. Bang! Like I said, didn't take very long. You and I have been counting off the days for the last several weeks until the March 1st opening of the striped bass season in New Jersey. A high level of anticipation uh, heading into this particular week, and boy, uh, that opening day soak sure produced. I know it was raining. We talked about that last week. Look for sunny skies. It was raining, but it was warm. And I'll tell you, Ed's was not the only 28 inch or over striped bass that we heard of. Phil from the tackle box up in Hazlitt. He put out the open sign early Monday morning. Already had a line of folks looking to get in there for those uh, so those ball, worm ball jigs and getting geared up for the season. Well, guess, guess what? Not long after that, the sun poked out for just a little bit on Monday uh, afternoon. Tommy Kay, formerly of Stevens Bait and Tackle in Long Branch, he checked in with a keeper's slot. Yes, a worm ball on a circle hook rig with a fish finder. Just so happened to be liberally dosed with a little fin essence. Exactly what we talked about last week. That's what Nick tried to do too. He's fishing with the uh, circle hook, blood worm, slider rig or fish finder rig, and doused with the finescence clam oil. Getting it done. Meanwhile, down south into Atlanta County, David Absecan Bay Sportsman Center said Monday, quote, the keepers are here. He said Miles Bosley outfished his dad, Bo, Monday afternoon, brought in this 30 and a half inch striped bass for the first keeper of the 2021 season, registered there at Absecan Bay. So definitely things have taken off just the way we were hoping and they are producing. So this week is uh, definitely taking a look outside at the weather, sunny skies. We have these fluctuating uh, weather temperatures right now. It's almost as if all those folks that we knew that were down in Florida that came back for March 1st, this is like Mother Nature's way of reminding them of the winter they missed. But it has become more of a tradition uh, in the last several years than it has been at any time that I remember in the last 20 or 30 years, that opening day striper fishery on March 1st. Uh, in fact, I was thinking that I'd fished with Captain Tim Keebler up on the upper stretches of the Delaware last season uh, for some smallmouth and muskie. And he was telling me then that even he loved to always come down and hit some of those southern sod banks to get in on the striped bass fishery, just like opening day of trout for so many people in Pennsylvania. In fact, Tim was on the fish this Monday in the rain as well. Locals have all, you know, have always headed back to the shores uh, of, of popular spots like uh, Tuckahoe, uh, Fortescue, uh, places along, uh, well, Graveling Point, and places in Island Heights and in Tom's River. I know I'm doing a little bit of spot burning, but these spots have been the traditional uh, opening day striper spots and throughout the month of March, and a lot of those folks that used to fish those places regularly 20 years ago have now gotten off the beaten track, found their own particular spots. I've got my own spots. So it's always worth a shot to do a little bit of prospecting. But social distancing has become the norm. And I know you're probably sick of hearing that word and all about the pandemic, but social distancing has been the one key takeaway from this whole pandemic that I think most fishermen like, keeping that distance between you and other anglers. So it gives you the opportunity to go out and find some of those spots uh, that perhaps where other people are not fishing. But in the, along those tidal rivers, creeks, estuaries, uh, I know the Delaware River is already starting to produce. Checked with uh, Steve Polidor. He let me know that he was out there on opening day as well. So they're getting the stripers along the Delaware as well. A lot of folks believe there are quite a few uh, of these holdover stripers in these estuaries, perhaps along the Delaware, uh, some of the feeder uh, rivers off the Delaware, certainly the Great Egg Harbor and the Mullica and the Toms and along areas of the, uh, of the Raritan as well. They've been stealing a lot of baits uh, meant for perch in January and February, and I think that's a good indication that we do have quite a few holdovers in the back. Uh, kind of a cool thing as you're getting out there fishing for these stripers, take notice of the color of the fish that you're catching. Uh, if they're holdovers, typically they'll have more of a bronze or brown color or golden color. That's because they've been stuck over the winter in those brackish waters. When we first start seeing those silvery fish, 
more silvery stripers with sea lice. That's when we know that the ocean migration is turned on as well. We're probably uh, about a month away from that hot epic bite that really kicks in with some of those pre-spawn staging uh, uh, stripers that are feeding along the Delaware. They'll come up the Great Egg as well and also along the Raritan uh, in the coming months. So usually the first week in April or mid-April is when that starts to, uh, starts to really hit. Uh, another thing to keep in mind as you're fishing for striped bass, don't forget to register with the state of New Jersey. Uh, it's free, but every Everybody's got to register. We got to be legal eagles heading here into 2021. Go to saltwaterregistry.nj.gov uh, to get your free registration. And of course, the switch over to circle hooks. I know we're probably going to lose quite a few fish along the way. I've already talked to a couple of guys, saw the posts on uh, social media. Some of these guys have been catching stripers solidly for years. And we do have this learning curve now that we're uh, soaking bloodworms um, with circle hooks. The, uh, the challenge is going to be figuring out how, uh, ways to rig them. Uh, I said it last week, I haven't used bloodworms on a circle just yet. Uh, I'm probably, I might be moving away from the high-low rig and going to a fish finder rig uh, probably next week sometime. So I'll report back and give you that idea. Uh, last week's video forecast, I gave the first rundown on locations in the state of New Jersey where you can find bloodworms. Uh, picked up on that from making our phone calls on Monday. So here, here are a few more shops and locations where you can pick up bloodworms this week if you're going for striped bass, perch, or winter flounder. Uh, the guys at Fisherman Supply in Point, uh, they're all geared up. I went by and saw Frank and crew at Gabriel Tackle on Friday. He had a bunch of jumbos in place. Uh, and all ready to go for that, uh, for that Matita Conk and Manilokin Bridge Bite. Petey at Charlie's in uh, Normandy, he got back from Florida. He's reopening full time and he'll have bloodworms available this weekend. Creekside Outfitters in Waretown, they're also back onto their regular hours and they've got bloodworms as well. Stopped in and saw Ray at Grumpy's Tackle. He showed me off a flat of juicy bloodworms over the weekend. Fisherman's Headquarters in LBI, they should have men at this point. Riptide Bait and Tackle in Brigantine, Andy expects to have them this weekend. Hands 2 in Cape May, they said by the middle of this month, March 15th, and that's when they'll be up and running full time again. Down in Delaware, I spoke with Steve at uh, Smith's Bait and Tackle, uh, Smith's Bait Shop in Leipzig. He's got bloodworms in as well. Uh, I also found out last week that AJ Max, a uh, young angler from uh, South Jersey, he put in an order of for two flats of bloodworms. I thought he was getting into the retail business. He's just doing some serious soak time, which is what I advise. So we thought it might be a, uh, a slow start to the 2021 season. Bloodworms are definitely getting it done, but it is, uh, I think it's less than a slow start. I think those fish are there. In fact, I talked last week and said, you know, throwing lures probably won't work. Well, the water temperatures are more into the low to mid 40s. And we are finding out some folks are throwing plastics. Bob Neuweiler sneaked out on his kayak uh, for opening day in the rain, throw in some plastics. You know, those hard plastic swimmers, those are working. Another friend of mine was throwing small paddle tails. Uh, look like those Kettle Creek swing shads at night. So it's certainly worth a shot too, especially along the bulkheads at night, uh, along some of those bridges. Again, uh, the key to finding some of those spots for going um, this week, next week with bloodworms, some of those muddy flats, sunny skies always help out to warm things. But again, that was proven not to be always the case as was the rainy day on Monday. Always seems to rain on the first day of the striper season every year. But temperatures here at the Jersey Shore, I said they're wildly fluctuating uh, this week. Uh, we are expecting a warming trend next week. It looks like temperatures uh, getting up around the 50s again. So that's good news for that. Bottom line, if you were thinking, bah, weather in February was cold, those stripers aren't gonna be biting. Well, the proof is in the blood pudding, so to speak. You've also got winter flounder options, not necessarily in Atlantic or Cape May or Delaware, uh, but certainly for Ocean County, for Barnegat Bay, up into Shark River and along the Navasink as well. Uh, you've got that two fish at 12 inch size limit in the Garden State, almost makes it difficult to wanna to get out there and spend all the money and chum and, and, and all the, the, the baits that you need. But I'll tell you what, it's a great way to shake the cobwebs. My dad and I were talking about it the other day. He reminded me of times when I was young, he'd take the Garvey out this time of year and he would tong up some clams and I was off to the side while he was working, uh, catching uh, some winter flounder off to the side because tongan was the best way of, of chumming up the grounds and, and bringing those fish in. So tongan or raking, uh, some guys use plungers along those uh, bulkheads. Uh, I'll tell you, it's a perfect time though, as far as the bulkheads go. Uh, pick up a copy of the Fisherman Magazine, put out a rod along a street end, kick back, get caught up in some reading. 
I'll tell you, winter flounder about the tastiest, the sweetest tasting fish as you'll find. Uh, I spoke to Greg Kudnick at Fisherman's Headquarters. He was waxing poetic about the old days of winter flounder as well. But he did say that things, uh, there were some slow years, but he said last year, 2020, was one of the better showings in some time. And he said, we hope that it's the beginning of a new cycle and this year keeps the trend rolling. If the weather holds up next week as they're calling with sunnier skies, temperatures in the 50s, it might make a good time for you to take a look at uh, maybe renting a boat. Uh, Bobby at Fisherman's Den, he's got a couple of rental boats up there on the Shark River. Always a great location for getting out for winter flounder. The L Street Pier up there is a good spot too. And again, any of those street ends. As far as uh, renting a boat, you know, I talked to Robin Scott at uh, Ray Scott's Dock in Margate. No, no winter flounder down that way, but she looks forward to getting the rental boats back in the water. And again, the end of this month, as we get into April especially, that's when we're going to start looking for some of those tide runners. We'll have some of those black drum in the back along the side banks, and hopefully we'll get an early showing of uh, striped bass in the back, or not striped bass, uh, an early showing of bluefish along those sedges as well. But certainly, uh, if you haven't thought about it, now's the time to start thinking about getting the boat ready uh, to launch as early as possible because it could be a good season back there in those back bays. Now, while it's closed here in New Jersey as of this past weekend, blackfish or totog, uh, down in Delaware, you still have blackfish uh, the rest of the winter. So if you're looking to do some some togging, you might want to check in with the folks at uh, Lewis Harbor Marina, uh, although things have really been slow. We haven't heard much along, uh, along those stretches, um, not from Lewis on down to Indian River either. Although, like I said, I did talk to Steve from uh, Smith Bait in Leipzig, and uh, he said it was mostly white perch on those tributaries and creeks, but he was looking forward to guys getting in, getting bloodworms. He figured once he had the bloodworms in the shop, guys along the Delaware coast were going to start doing some striper fishing. So hint, hint, those bloodworms are in place time to give it a soak. Trout fishing too, the efforts in uh, the stocking efforts in Delaware, Pennsylvania, and of course, New Jersey will get started sometime this month. And also, as I read in the March edition of the Fisherman Magazine, John Panola talks about shad. We should be getting a shad run pretty soon. Uh, for more on that, let's check in with George, our Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, first thing we got to talk about is this crazy weather we've been having over the past, you know, couple days. It's been cold. It's been warm. It's been cold. We've had rain. You got to watch the ice, guys, when we get conditions like this. You know, some places are starting to thin out. Always be safe when you're getting out in that ice. Check your depth. This time of year, you could have open water in a heartbeat, so be sure you're careful. Now, I do want to touch on a few things. Some guys checked in. Uh, Tim Coyle was getting some beautiful perch out there in uh, Beltsville, catching some of those, uh, those real safe ices back in those uh, uh, by Preacher's Camp area where it doesn't get much sun. So there's a lot of good fishing yet. Up north, you guys are going to be even safer. You can get out there and, you know, the ice is going to hang in there for another couple of weeks than it is down here in the southern Poconos. Now, one of the things we talk about this time of year as we get into March is the shad season. I know everybody's getting crazy about it. We're all ready for it. It's a sure sign of spring and, in my opinion, the start of the real fishing season here for the freshwater. Now, I did check in with Eric Fisler, and he's the uh, the director of the, the Bi-State Annual Shad Fishing Contest, and he says this year it looks like the tournament is a go. He's in the middle of getting all his permits right now, and I think that the Shad Tournament will be, you know, online. Uh, I think you guys got to go to shadfishingcontest.com. Look for the dates. Uh, I said he's getting his permits now. He'll be publishing the dates shortly, but check in there, shadfishingcontest.com, and I think we're going to have a great shad fishing season this year. Guys, I hope you get out and enjoy it. The weather's breaking, the water's warming up. Hopefully you're going to get out and get some fish. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. So you trout guys, the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife will hold its annual trout stocking meeting virtually this Saturday, March 6th. That's at 10 a.m. It's an important meeting, provides an excellent opportunity for anglers to ask questions, voice their opinions, give some suggestions. Uh, about New Jersey's trout stocking. Uh, licensed anglers should have received the email to register for the discussion, but you can see that URL on the screen. You can also go Google uh, New Jersey trout or New Jersey trout stocking meeting. Uh, again, on the marine fisheries side, that New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meets on Thursday, March 4th, at which point the state hopes to finalize the 2021 summer flounder regulations here in the Garden State. I will be sitting in on that meeting. I'll have more to report this weekend into the next week and also in next week's video forecast. But again, if you're seeing this on Thursday, you're going into that meeting with just two options, May 22nd, to, to September 19th, 
or May 28th to September 28th. Those are the two options being deliberated at that New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting. You can get all the information over there at thefisherman.com. Um, again, a full rundown in next week's video forecast. I will hope to be doing that forecast from Egg Harbor inside of Tackle Direct in advance of their Clearance Canyon. The Clearance Canyon event, always a popular event uh, to kick off the spring at Tackle Direct. That is going to go on in a couple of weeks. I'll give you more information about that incredible sa sales event. It's virtual this year, so it's a good opportunity for you to score some good tackle. Uh, one other thing, there's a virtual plug day, a virtual plug day event planned for this Saturday, March 6th. It's on Facebook, the likes of Pappy's Pride, Scabelly, Lights Out, Fatty Lures, Jimmy Banano's got some, Mega Strike, a whole bunch of other plug builders uh, because of the loss of all these shows during the pandemic, the winter that wasn't as far as show season. So you can go look for that in Facebook, go check that out, look for Virtual Plug Day, and you will find details on that cool event that's happening this weekend. It's a good time to stock up for that April run, which begins uh, I don't know, could begin the first week in April. Sometimes it's the middle of April up there on Raritan Bay, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if we start finding those pre-spawn staging striped bass in early April this time of year, uh, this, this year anyway, uh, and not just up on the Raritan, but the likes of, of the Mullica, the Great Egg, and of course up the Delaware as well. Uh, the March edition of the Fisherman Magazine, I mentioned that, it's out now, it's on newsstands. If you don't subscribe, go log into thefisherman.com and if you're not subscribing to this video, if you don't get it via subscription on YouTube, click the bell. Get yourself a subscription to this YouTube channel because then you'll get all the videos that are coming out on a regular basis, including the one next week from Tackle Direct, where we'll check in again for more on the Striper Tally for 2021. Get out there this weekend, catch them up, and I'll see you next week right here at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.